Dr. Jaffe, what are your thoughts on um, N-acetylcysteine or also called NAC? And how does that uh, differentiate from regular cysteine? Well, good question. NAC and acetylcysteine has been around and it has come and gone in vogue since the late 80s. Basically, it's an expensive way of giving cysteine, but cysteine, a sulfur amino acid that is essential for detoxification and essential for building glutathione inside the cell. Cysteine smells like rotten eggs most of the time, um, unless you can get anhydrous material and work with it properly, as we do. So we don't have an NAC for two reasons. First of all, we include cysteine and cysteine in our triple detoxifier, the perk detoxin guard. And second of all, because if you follow our guidance, alkaline way eating with GGOBE, garlic, ginger, onions, brassica sprouts, and eggs are each high sulfur and provide plenty, plenty, plenty of cysteine. So the reason that NAC came in as a supplement was because cysteine, the active amino acid, smells, is volatile, is easily oxidized. It easily smells like rotten eggs. So it's hard to work with. When you acetylate it, it doesn't smell. But the body has to take the acetyl group off in order to get the cysteine, and very often people's liver has too much fat and doesn't deacetylate very well. So NAC had a brief enthusiastic introduction because of two people at Stanford who thought that it would help with certain chronic viral illnesses. It turned out that was a placebo effect, and so that fell out of vogue. And so NAC did not succeed as a medication. It was tested as a drug and failed. But it is available on the market. And many people have been educated by the companies that sell NAC that here you have a cysteine source that's easy to get in the body. And that's not untrue, but it's also an expensive way of getting cysteine. 